Welcome everybody to our next installment of trigonometric substitutions. Let's see what happens with our next type of substitution. So now in this problem, we're asked to evaluate the integral of 3 over the square root of 9 minus x squared. Again, the expression we see under the radical is kind of guiding us to what our trig substitution is going to be. When we see 9 minus x squared, kind of what that is reminding us is something that looks like 1 minus sine squared being cosine squared. Okay. So that if I then did some kind of substitution with sine, that's really what I want in this case to then convert that to cosine squared. Well, what I'm missing in this part is the 9 that's in front. So how can I compensate for that? Well, I can just throw in a factor of 3. So basically, if I'm seeing something that looks like x squared minus, or a squared minus x squared, then that tells me that my substitution can just be a times the sine of theta for that. And so what that gives me in this case is 9 minus, if x is 3 sine theta, then that's going to give me 9 sine squared. If I factor out a 9, now that gives me my 1 minus sine squared. And so that expression then simplifies to 9 times cosine squared. And so that's what I have. That's what I'm really going to want as far as what my substitution will be. So now let's carry this out with the integration. All right, so that we've said our substitution is going to look like x being 3 sine of theta, so that our dx looks like 3 cosine of theta, d theta, and our 9 minus x squared then just simplifies to 9 times cosine squared. So when we do that, and we just kind of plug in and evaluate now, what do we have? Well, we've got a 3 on top, square root of, now 9 cosine squared of theta on the bottom, and our dx becomes a 3 cosine of theta, d theta at that point. So that what happens in our integration? So we've got an integral, we've got a 9 cosine of theta on top. On the bottom, I have 3 cosine of theta. So that my cosines cancel out at that point, and I just have the integral of 3 d theta. And so that gives me just 3 theta plus c. Okay, so now how do I go back? Well, I come back to my trig substitution, and basically I'm saying that, if that's my angle theta, that I have x over 3 being sine of theta. And so if I kind of do my inverse trig um, functions, then I end up with the arc sine of x over 3 being theta. And so with that substitution, what do I have as my final answer? I get 3 times the arc sine of x over 3 plus my arbitrary constant. So this has kind of been a short and sweet version of what can happen in this situation. I hope you've enjoyed it, and let's work another one in the next video. See you then.